Hi, what's up? What's up? Empress Justice here. Welcome to the Ash Ashwini third quarter moon reading for the 28th of July 2024. Now, the day before the Ashwini third quarter moon drops, I will be at Barco Brighton Bash uh, Carnival on the 27th of July 2024. I will be in the holistic area giving readings for £15 a pop, 10 minute taste of readings for £15. If you'd like to come along, please come along. I would love to see you guys there. It's going to be an incredible festival. There's going to be so much talent, so many activities. I would absolutely love to see you there. So please come along, catch a reading and please enjoy the rest of the festivities at that carnival. It's going to be lit. Okay. On top of that, remember, it's also 10% off all online services throughout July. You better hurry up because July is almost over. Okay. So 10% off all online services throughout the whole of July. There's also a waiting list <clears throat> for those who wish to join my, there's also a mailing list, forgive me, for all those who wish to enjoy further discounts on four other months of the year. So if you'd like to do that, you'd like to join that mailing list, you can join it at Empress Justice Tarot. 77 at gmail.com you can email me if you wish to be a part of that mailing list all i need is your full name and your email and i will send you lots of updates i will send you lots of details about the discounts that are taking place on those particular months that will not be open to the public so go ahead and join the mailing list there's also going to be a special mailing list for all targeted individuals beginning from august <clears throat> which means that if you join the mailing list as a targeted individual um it means that not only will you get the discounts of the general mailing list you will also get a discount every august of 25 percent off so you will have five months of the year in which you will have discounts on top of the ones that everybody else has all right so as a ti if you'd like to join that mailing list, it is realjusticetarot at gmail.com, okay? Those are the ones for the TI mailing list. All the details and all the requirements will be listed in the description on YouTube. If you look in the description on YouTube, everything is there. I know it's long as hell, but read through it. You'll get all the details there, okay? <clears throat> now, also, there are going to be service changes in August. I'm going to add magical services on top of um, the cartomancy that I normally do. So there's going to be magical works as well. Um, not gonna lie, they're pretty pricey. They're pretty pricey to do because it takes a while to do. So I'm going to have those on offer as well. So if you go to uh, YouTube, I'm going to upload this on YouTube. It will have all the details in the description, what is required for the magical services and the waiting lists, okay? Now, Without further ado, let's get on with the reading. So third quarter moon in Ashwini. This is in Aries, all right? It takes place on the 28th of the 7th, 2024. That's on a Sunday. And it drops at 3.51 a.m. British summertime. Big four, Ashwini, moon. Porsche sun, Purnavasu ascendant in Gemini, and Purva Bajrapada midheaven in Aquarius. We cannot escape them Jupiterian influences no matter how hard we try, bro. We can't escape those Jupiterian influences. They just keep popping up. But the good thing about it is, is that Ketu tends to go very well with Jupiter. Okay. Now the Jupiterian energies, they tend to encourage masses of abundance. They tend to encourage you know, lots of generosity from spirit and from the cosmos, wherever our Jupiter is, is usually what we have an abundance in. Where Ketu comes in is that it it's, Ketu is like a never ending void, right? It just sucks up energy, sucks up this, sucks up that. So Ketu is like a void that sucks everything up, right? It's a head with that, it's a body without a head, remember? So it's just utilizing energy. It's just sucking up energy. And with, when Jupiter and key two are combined together jupiter is balanced out by key two it's in a way that's seemingly crazy and seemingly destructive but it's actually balancing out 
Jupiter's natural abundant qualities. So wherever, so whenever Jupiter is getting too much, getting too much too soon, or you know they're not taking proper care of their abundance, key two comes and just who was that shut up? Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that during this third quarter in Ashwini we will be getting an abundance of blessings especially in terms of our mindset in terms of what we're thinking in terms of what we visualize for our lives we are going to be receiving a lot of blessings conceptually we get so many new ideas coming through we've got so many new concepts we've got new ways of communicating that allow us to move more efficiently through um, our social situations there's lots of um, interactions with peers and extended family there's lots of that there's a an abundance of blessings when it comes to that but where ashwini becomes useful is not only that it has some level of social skill because even though it's key to um shout out to hidden octave it's also sideways facing so there's a lot of interaction with other human beings so it does reduce jupiter's overabundance in specific areas but it does it in a gentle way it's not doing too much ashwini is not doing too much so ashwini helps us balance out that abundance that we get from porvabhadrapada and pornavasu abundance in concept abundance in ideas like it balances out it balances it out by enabling us to actually act on these ideas in a step-by-step -step fashion rather than just rushing into things because ashwini as much as ashwini can be wild can be crazy for the most part it's actually just instinctive which is a whole different enterprise from just being wild for the sake of it ashwini is actually way more instinctive than it is wild and uncompromising the wildness comes from Mula, okay? The uncompromising wildness um, comes from Mula. It doesn't come from uh, Ashwini or Maga, especially not Maga. Ashwini is very, very balanced in terms of the Ketuvian expression that comes from it. So with Purnavasu and Parvabhajapada, like I said before, there's an abundance of conceptual ideas, an abundance of... You know, we might find there are about 5,000 ideas running through a minute. Where Ashwini comes in is our Ashwini will kind of take from those ideas. It will kind of take from those ideas by acting on them in a gentle way. Acting on them in a way that actually allows us to integrate with the world around us. Do you understand what I'm saying? And also helping us to remain true to the core essence of who we are on top of that. So we have all these wonderful ideas that we're blessed with, but it's balanced out with an innate authenticity that is that is expressed in a gentle way. With Pusha Sun now, um, with Ashwini and Pusha, it is very much about the home. It's very much about family, but most of all, it's actually about childhood. Now, Pusha has a repressed inner child. It has a repressed imagination within it. Um, it's the kind of inner child that is heavily responsible, um, like has a drive towards being normal. <clears throat> but Ashwini ain't down for that. Ashwini is like, I'm going to be what I am. Ashwini is very elemental. The same type of person that Ashwini was as a baby is likely to be the same type of person that Ashwini is as an adult. Okay. So there's a very unchanging quality about Ashwini that we would do well to embody. Portia wants to conceal the inner child, keep it hidden. Ashwini wants to let that inner child out. Because when they let that inner child out, the ideas and concepts that are in our heads, the extended family that we have to talk to, the peers that we're confronted with, we find more authentic ways of engaging with them, but without necessarily upsetting the apple cart, okay? Now, this is going to be a time where we're going to want to open our minds and we're going to want to seek knowledge. Once again, Porva Bajrapada, Midheaven, um, the inevitability of us going into deep reaching ideas 
that also reach wide. It's like it's a worldwide thing, but it's like it's powerful and it's intense. That's an inevitable direction that we're going to go in at the end of the 30 days. Okay. <clears throat> but with Punabasu Ascendant, we're also searching for knowledge. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say the Jupiterian signs offer an abundance of concept and ideas. Because Purnavasu is going to want to learn more. There's going to be this desire to learn more, to, to seek the truth, right? And then with Padma Bajrapada, there are all these ideas that go deep into the nature of the world, but also go far out in terms of futuristic ideas and concepts that could actually help the world on a deeper seated level. So you've got all of this in our heads swirling around. And at this time, these things are encouraged. But where Ashwini comes in, which I really love, is not only are these ideas um, kind of explored physically in a gentle way, um, Ashwini also allows us to venture out into different territories, to feel things out, to actually connect with people and find out how these ideas in our heads match up with reality. So... Ashwini actually helps us to venture into new territory, to travel more, to meet new people, to experience new things, different things. Do you understand? It allows us to experience things that are like different and new and vibrant and amazing. It allows us to experience these things. And this is exactly the type of energy that we need to be in. So for the most part, it seems like, you know, for the time being anyway, I haven't read the rest of it. It seems like there's a really balanced energy going on with the Ash Ashwini third quarter moon. It seems like it's really balanced because we want to open our minds, but because we're willing to broaden our horizons and we're supposed to broaden our horizons, it, it, it provides a nice balance and it actually gives us what we're looking for. It allows us to open our minds without much struggle, okay? Now, let's get into the astrological placements. Um, we've got the moon squared the sun, again, doing the same thing, but in different ways or having the same intentions, but doing different things. We've got the moon trining Maga in Mercury. We've got the moon squared Uttara Ashada in Pluto. A uh, snapshot of what that means. It means that we do see things more clearly. I did say that. I do. I did say that we would see things more clearly because all these ideas and concepts are coming through. And then Ashwini provides a, a sort of reality, a reality check. In fact, both Ashwini and Purnavasu are sideways facing, so we're more likely to have more interactions with other people, which provides a, a sort of grounding and an ability to see things more clearly. So there's an, a balance between our intuitive selves and our logical selves, or rather our instinctual selves and our knowledgeable selves, like I explained with the key to Jupiter thing going on. Um, we've got compulsive and destructive behavior. We've got deeply buried feelings exposed, but we have got sub... The subconscious engages in a healing process, which makes sense because Ashwini is one of the two healing nakshatras. The other one is Shatabisha and they're both horses. Coincidence? I think not. Um, Ashwini is quick to move forward, which in, in and of itself can be a healing thing. So as much as deeply buried emotions and subconscious stuff comes out, where Ashwini comes in is that Ashwini is quick to move forward. Shatabisha goes deep, but Ashwini moves forward, but it doesn't move forward again in a way that is, you know, jarring or anything like that. It moves forward in a way that is balanced and gentle. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how Ashwini moves. So as much as all these subconscious, all this subconscious stuff comes out during the third quarter moon in Ashwini, it's balanced out with Ashwini's ability to just move forward but move forward in a way that's actually comfortable and not too jarring to anyone else. So even with this stuff coming out from our subconscious, it's not as destructive as it could be because it, there's so much there to 
that we get to unpack and we get to unpack it in a way that actually moves with our own pace. We don't have to move with anybody else's pace. And ironically, that actually speeds forward the healing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let's move forward. I've got some other notes to do with Ashwini. Third quarter moon before I move on. Okay, so we've got prioritizing medical expertise. This is going to be important for us to do. Again, it's, it's Ashwini, right? It's a, it's a last quarter moon in Ashwini. Yeah. This is the time to act and this is the time to actually focus on our healing. Ashwini is a healing nakshatra. We've got improvement on sensual acuity, meaning our five senses, like sense, like smell, scent, taste, touch, and vision. These five things here, um, we might notice that we become more sensitive in these things. And therefore, we might be more discerning about the kind of physical experiences that we allow into our lives. Um, we've got medical marvels, health and beauty. Um, again, Ashwini is a very healing nakshatra. And embracing this nakshatra during the third quarter moon, um, that's going to be advisable because it's going to open up a lot of positive experiences, not just in our healing, but also in the way that we present ourselves. Another thing about Ashwini is that Ashwini is incredibly stylish. On top of being incredibly balanced, it's, it's an incredibly stylish nakshatra. Whereas Mula, like, truly doesn't give a fuck and they'll just wear whatever is utilitarian. And Marga has this sort of, you know, has this sort of antique look going on. Ashwini is the one that is actually in contact with other people. So its style, whilst it can be Ketuvian, it's also very stylish. It's also very elegant. It's also very with it. So Ashwini really helps us with our style. It really helps us with our presentation, helps us with our look. Do you understand what I mean? So embracing Ashwini also allows us to be not only healthy and healed, but also beautiful as well. It, it kind of, you know, it reinforces our beauty in a way. Um, we've also got vision, loyalty, and enjoyment. Vision meaning, meaning like visualizations or, you know, the ideas that come through. I talked about that during, um, the opener of this reading. So we've got vision, loyalty, and enjoyment. Um, so expect a lot of, a lot of ties to deepen at this time. Expect a lot of ties to deepen. Um, we've also got obliged rather than inspired towards independence. It is going to feel like that, but the more we behave with independence and the more we just strike out and do our thing is the better that we're going to feel. So whilst we're not going to want to be independent like that, it's advisable that we actually blaze our own trail in this sense. Um, there's the desire to explore horizons internally and externally. This is a good thing. We want to follow that. There's constant questioning and we're left with more questions and answers. That's the Purnavasu Ascendant. Okay. Um, but again, these are questions worth asking. Now is a time to let our curiosity fully be explored here. Okay. And... The most important notes are directness and outspokenness, a refusal to be denied. We need to embrace that. That's an attitude that we need to have for the third quarter in Ashwini. And we've got openness, frankness, and energy, spontaneity, and liveliness. Again, these are qualities that we absolutely need to embody for the third quarter moon in Ashwini. And for Jupiter, we've got uniting with our shadow selves. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so... <laughs> So yes, Jupiter is ultimately about delving into our shadow self so that we can come out of it being whole human beings, right? And the thing about Ashwini is that Ashwini is not averse to this. Ashwini actually helps that process along because it is actually part of, it's actually part of denying Jupiter too much of its abundance, and thus preventing Jupiter from becoming too corrupted. 
So this is a good thing, like uniting with our shadow selves in order to find out what those things need so that we can be, we can properly be who we are. That's going to be incredibly important. And Ashwini actually helps with this because the, it's the shadow side that allows us to be more stylish, more charming, to move through the world with more confidence. So they, this is a really good thing. Like the third quarter moon in Ashwini, it looks like it's going to be very balanced and it looks like it's going to be very, um, you know, it looks like it's going to be very balanced and there isn't going to be much internal struggle. We've got the subconscious stuff coming out, but again, because it's Ashwini, yeah, the internal struggle is not going to be as pronounced as it could be, which is wonderful. And I do love that. Okay. Now, before we move on to the 12 signs, I've got to read these cards for the third quarter moon in Ashwini. So let's get on with that. So first off, I'm going to read them in reverse. We've got the last quarter moon in Aries, work through your feelings. No, act, act. That's what you need to be doing. And then we've got the Prince of Discs, which is the King of Pentacles. And we've got the Seven of Wands in between the Seven and Eight of Wands from the in-between tarot. Okay, so let's have a look at this picture. I've got notes that I've written down. So let me go through them now. We've got too much politics, lecturing online and choosing to abandon the situation. Okay, so th that's the least important stuff that we've got. Now I'm going to read the most important stuff that we've got for the third quarter moon in Ashwini. So we have got much abundance, progress in politics and progress in leadership and management. <coughs> there are many of you who felt like you were going to have to choose between what you truly believe and earning money. But... <laughs> Actually, the opposite is the case the more you work with your beliefs the more you work with what you what truly means something to you is actually the more abundance that you're going to have in your life it might not be in the way that you expect but there is something to be said for integrity when you have integrity you are the money do you understand what I'm saying so for many of us when we decide to step up and take the lead in what we want and refuse to be denied and use, you know, use our skills to reinforce what we believe. I've talked about the uh, talked about that in the impromptu reading for Empress Justice Daily. When we do that, far from it hurting our pockets, it actually helps our pockets. <laughs> hey, cheers. Far from, far from hurting our pockets, us standing by what we believe, us instinctively going for what we know is true, that actually helps our finances in major ways, okay? Again, it is not going to be in the ways that we expect, but it will come as a very pleasant surprise when we stand by our integrity and we stand by who we are spirit rewards us for that because if you are being if you are having integrity and your word means something and your what your your word is your bond spirit responds accordingly do you understand what i'm saying spirit responds accordingly so be prepared for a lot of financial abundance to come through because you are willing to stick by your principles and to be who you truly are. This is so lit. <laughs> this is so lit. And I kind of love it for us. I really do. Um, but yeah, what else can I get from this? More and more of you are willing to walk away from anything that doesn't fall in line with your integrity. But again, the integrity thing is not what we think it is. I'm going to go into another philosophy story time. Like, you know, I like to ramble. Just, just bear with me. Um, 
what I notice is that sometimes when we attract people who seemingly have different beliefs to us, what we actually attract are people with similar personalities to ourselves. And usually when we're ready to walk away from those people, it means that we've learned a lesson. But the lesson that we learn is not the lesson that we expect. Do you understand what I mean? There are those of us who truly learn a lesson and we walk away from anything that does not align with who we are. And it hurts for us to walk away. But when we do, my God, that like that the rewards just come pouring in, bruh. Just just pouring in. It's crazy. So it's you know, you you have some loss, some of you. Some of you have some loss, but it's replaced with joy. And it's replaced with a stronger sense of self and replaced with more physical abundance. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's yeah some of you let go of things that truly meant something to you but they weren't aligned with who you were they were not aligned with you and you had to let let those people go or let those things go but when you did that's when the rewards started coming in and again it's it's wild to think that because we're usually taught that you have to make the sacrifice between your beliefs and you know your money but seems to be that trend is bucking at the moment so <coughs> yeah yeah and not living by your integrity can actually hurt your pockets so there's that yeah people don't want fakery anymore it doesn't matter what political leaning they're on people just don't want fake shit it's just the truth People just don't want fake shit. Not anymore. So yes, third quarter moon in Ashwini looks extremely lit indeed. You know, it's one of those fortunate times where we don't have to choose between our integrity and our comfort. They're both aligned. They're both aligned, okay? So, that was for the third quarter moon in Ashwini. I'm just lotioning my hands. And in a second, I'm going to get to the 12 signs, okay? Starting with Aries. This is for Ashwini, Barony, and Kritika, okay? Now, first of all, Aries, your focus needs to be on your first house. It needs to be all about you for the next... Is it 7 to 30 days or 8 to 30 days? I think it's 8 to 30 days, right? For the next 8 to 30 days, it needs to be about you, okay? It needs to be about your interests, you know, your appearance, your life, what it means to you, um, how you come across to others, but also your relationship with yourself. That's, that's first house thing, first house stuff, your relationship with yourself and how that impacts your life, okay? I don't know why I'm getting this, but some of you need to focus on your female siblings as well. Because your female siblings play an important part in what will happen next with regards to certain important events in your life. So, whatever gender you are, whatever sex you are, keep an eye on your female or your fam relatives at this moment. Okay? That's going to be crucial. So with that said, let's get into the cards. We have got the moon card for you, Aries. We have got the ace of baskets and we've got questioning, all right? Now, for your notes, we've got problems with vehicles, creative travels, creative portfolio, putting yourself out there, wearing your heart on your sleeve, hypersensitivity, Blissful love, escapism, drug problem, drug problems, creative happiness and happiness in the family. Oh, yeah, Aries, luckily for you, I don't see drugs. 
if there are any drug problems um it's likely to be somebody else who's going through them and not you thank god for that but like when it comes to you though you do have addictions of your own <coughs> and where that addiction comes from is the desperate need to feel positive and happy all the time so you might be addicted to your work you might be addicted to food you might be addicted to media you might be addicted to exercise whatever it is that you're doing it's become an addiction for you now because you want to actually move away from your problems and i feel like you know, the happiness that you kind of embody or the happy nature that you're trying to embody, it can seal something deeper that you need to allow to penetrate your life. That Like something deeper is calling out to you. Like I said, there was there are certain deeply buried feelings beneath the surface and you're desperately trying to run away from them because that's what Aries does. Aries likes to move forward. They like to keep pressing on. They don't like to ruminate in the past. But if you don't deal with it, that past is going to come up in uglier ways than you wanted. Allow yourself to really get deep into your who you are and how you feel right now. Allow yourself to go deep. Stop trying to run away from the deep feelings that you have because you're not going to die if you go deep. You're not going to die if you go deep into those feelings. I'm getting poor of a bunch of pardon from this as well. If you don't acknowledge your feelings now, them feelings are going to come get you and you do not want that to happen. So whilst I'm telling everybody to focus on their Aryan nature, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But in your case, Aries, you cannot let that Aryan side get out of control to the point where, you know, your deeper nature comes up in less favorable ways. You've really got to deal with like your hidden self and your sensitivity and especially your feelings about your peers because you're not being honest with them. There are some of your peers that are around you that, you know, you're just not being honest with them. You're kind of, you're not telling them the truth about who you are and what you need out of life. You're, you're not telling them the truth. <clears throat> and there are things that you need that you're not allowing yourself to ask for. You've got to ask for what you want and you've got to ask for you know, your needs to be met in a healthy way. Because all this dopamine chasing, all it's doing is allowing you to, to run away from who you are. When I talked about the femmes and the women in your family, especially your female siblings or your fam siblings, um, I feel like instead of asking them to do things for you, which, you know, a lot of Aryans are inclined to do for some reason, Instead of asking them to do something for you, actually talk to them, take an interest in them, have a mutual conversation with them, have healing conversations with those people, because the conversations that you have with them now, it's going to be crucial in the future. So have those conversations, have the difficult conversations. They understand more than you think. Ask them questions. You'll be surprised at what you uh, you'll be surprised at what they know when you actually don't take them for granted, especially if you're masculine or a, or a man. You'll be surprised at what they know. So let's see what else I can get for. I do see new love coming into your life, though. That's a good thing. But without this, that is just that will just fizzle out quickly. Confront your inner demons, confront your inner self. And that will last a bit longer. Maybe a lot longer, who knows. So Aries, is that it? Alright, that's not it. It's weird because you want to leave the past behind and you should leave the past behind. But it's one of those things where if you don't acknowledge your past, it'll come get you. And it will ruin any happy moments you created here. Yeah, don't run. Do not run. Stay with it. Especially if, if, it's anything, if the past has anything to do with your peers. Stay with it. You know, stay with it. 
I feel like that's it for Aries. So that was for you. That was quite a heavy reading. I apologize, but I get what I get. That was for Aries. That was for Ashwini, Barony, and Kritika. Thank you so much, Aries. Peace and blessings. I love you so much, my beautiful Rams. Bye bye, my darlings. Leo now. This is for Maga, Polva Palguni, and Utana Palguni. Now, let's see what's in store for you, Leo. Okay, first of all, we've got your ninth house to be considered. That's your long term fortune. That's far flung places. That's your second marriage, if you have a first marriage, or your second big love, if you have a first big love. Um, it is your life experience. It is your informal education. It's stuff like university, it's higher learning, it's your faith, it's your spirituality. It's your sense of ethics, law, morality. So all of these things need to be paid attention to by you because they're going to have a big impact on your life moving forward. I do feel like a lot of you are going to be traveling more anyway. That's just going to be on the cards for you. But you need to actually embrace venturing out further than your immediate environment. You need to actually embrace you know traveling out to different places moving into different places you know embrace a different way of life because this current one that you're on is getting to be taxing okay initiative aries aries demands that you have initiative and this is the thing with you leo right you can be stuck in your ways you can be very very stuck in your ways listen lead i, I hold my hands up I'm a mugger son, right? Fuck change. I don't like it, but it... <laughs> no, you need to have changes in your life, Leo. It is essential. It is essential that you have changes in your life. It's got to be done. You've got to have changes in your life. You've got to embrace them because those changes will lead to some very big opportunities for you. <laughs> and, I ha and I have a feeling that there's some part of you that knows that. And you're doing your best to embrace what's going on. But it's like you're drowning in so many obligations. You need to, some of you need to take a break. I'm not going to hold you. Some of you need to take a break. Now, usually with this, it means that you're not taking initiative. And this means you need to take initiative, but you need to be more selfish. I'm sorry, Leo, you need, like, you really need to be more selfish and you need to think about what you need to do. Because even though on the surface you seem like a selfish sign, you're actually not. You're actually constantly thinking about what other people think, how other people want you to look, how other people want you to dress. Like, no, fuck that noise. Just think about what you want to do. Because the more you think about what you want to do is the more you, initiative you will actually have in your life. Be more selfish, venture out more, Ex broaden your horizons physically, learn from Ashwini, broaden your physical horizons. Like Ashwini or Aries is literally like too focused on the future sometimes, but you're the opposite. You need to get out there and you need to just explore more shit. You cannot just be here, like just, just stuck in the mud, stuck doing the same thing, like just Shake the cobwebs off and get the fuck out there, baby. Get out there. Okay? Now, let's see what we've got for your notes. So we've got genius. We've got endurance in work. We've got many delays. Little gets done. Sacrificing too much. Stress, overwhelmed activism, behind the scenes work. Again, you've got to be more selfish. <clears throat> now, I said before that for everybody, that the more you focus on your principles and your ethics, the more you're going to be financially rewarded. Leo, you are no different. You are especially no different. And I feel like the work that you're actually doing is, I feel like some of the things that you're doing is because you feel obligated to help other people. A lot of you have experienced quite a few blessings um, during this time in July. Like you've experienced quite a few blessings lately. 
and it's made you think to yourself i actually want to help other people i want to help other people get to where i am but the thing that you're not really recognizing leo is that you're not anywhere yet like why are you trying to share things that you don't have there are things that you've manifested wonderful things that are about to come to pass for you in major ways but they haven't arrived yet not fully why are you sharing things now like why do you feel obligated to be where other people are just because like this is the thing right this is the thing i'm a ti right and as a ti there are many other people who are displaced, who are isolated, who are tortured. And I'm kind of in the same situation as them, kind of, just not as severe, right? But my thing is that I'm trying to progress with my life in a certain way. And that means I have a different mindset to some of the other TIs in my life. Now... If you find yourself in a similar position where you are in the same, it, it, you might find yourself in a, in a position where you're in the same place, but you're not in the same boat. It's like you're in the same lake, but the vehicle that you're traveling in is different. Okay. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because your mindset is different. You can be a marginalized person, Leo, just like other people are marginalized, but because of your mindset, you might be traveling in a different boating vehicle than the other people that are in the same lake as you. Um, coming out of that boat to join theirs is just not a good idea at this point. And that is too much sacrifice. It's too much sacrifice. You're trying to jump out of the boat to join what, what, what boat they're fucking traveling in. They're going slower than you. The The... The journey is rockier and yet what you're tempted to do, you're not going to do it, but what you're tempted to do is to come out of your own speedboat to go on their fucking rowboat. Like, why? Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't owe anyone anything. In fact, the best way to help the people around you, I'm sorry to say, is for you to ascend yourself. And I know it sounds like some Iron Rand shit. And you know how much I hate that bitch. All right. I know it sounds like some Ayn Rand crap. But truth, truthfully and truly. As a person in a marginalized position. Especially if you're marginalized. The best way for you to move forward. Is to move forward with a different mindset. Stay in your fucking speedboat. Go all the way. And then once you've reached your destination, then you can have a whole fucking feast or have a whole fucking party for the remaining people that have yet to come over. Maybe after that, you can do that, but not now. Don't come out of the fucking boat that you're in to go into other people's boats. Don't shift your mindset to match theirs. Don't come down to their level to try to comfort them. They're not trying to hear it. You need to focus on you, Leo. Fact of the matter is, you need to focus on yourself. And that's that's just the way it is. Okay? I, again, I know it sounds selfish, but like, if you're in a different mindset in comparison to everybody else around you, that mindset is what's helping you get your blessings. That's what's been helping you. Don't come out of it now, because you're just going to be running on empty. Do you understand what I'm saying? So... You know, and when it comes to the behind the scenes work, I feel like, oh, um, that has, that has something to do with something completely different than your mindset. Um, I feel like some of you, when it comes to work, you might be more exposed to the managerial and administrative side of things. Some of you might get more input when it comes to work that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, some of you might have more input and some of you might be sought out more for your advice. If that's the case, you need to be paid for it, my darling. You can't do it for free. You can't do it for free. You've got to do it. Yeah, you've got to charge people for what you know. 
because some of some people will you know some people will make you a bigger part of what goes on backstage or behind the scenes of something and they're going to want your advice on something because of how knowledgeable you are charge for it charge for it that's the only thing that i'm going to suggest to you charge for it if you're good at something never do it for free you know even my social media if i get enough followers i get paid for it i'm only doing it for free temporarily if you're good at something never do it for free it, it's just a fact of life if you're good at something don't do it for free charge money charge money for your advice charge for your time your time is valuable and you can't get it back money you can always get back do you understand what i mean so you know stress overwhelmed activism sacrificing too much yeah let that go you've got to be selfish now now is the time to knuckle down protect what you've you've invested protect what you've put your heart your soul your ass into like protect all of that and just let the other people with like different mindsets go you're focused on your mindset okay so what else can i get for leah apart from everything that i've said you're gonna have a very good eight to thirty days in spite of everything that i've said it's not going to dampen anything that you become successful in and there are going to be quite a few things that you become successful in. it's not going to dampen your success but again don't try to save a sinking ship let that shit go it's all you now so that was for leo hang on is that it Some of you have predicted something major that's going to happen. That was meant to prepare you for the next phase forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of your prophecies have come to pass. And you need to protect yourself from the fallout. But other than that, you're... Your 8 to 28 days is actually very good. There's a lot of blessings imminent. But again, the blessings that you've got coming, they're nowhere near at their full capacity yet. So don't go sharing it with people unless they absolutely deserve it. Okay, so that was for Leo. That was for um, Maga, Porifa Palguni and Uttara Palguni. I love you so much, my kings and queens of the zodiac. Bye bye my darlings Virgo This is for Uttara Paoguni, Hasta and Chitra This is going to be a short one Virgo There's not much to report um, Or maybe there is a lot to report Because we've got two Karim two Knights of Wands over here Baby Let me tell you something right Your passions and your greatest skills are coming to the forefront in a major way. And of course, there's optimism here. Of course, there is. This is advising you that you have every reason to feel optimistic or to feel hopeful about how this is going to turn out because it's going to turn out beautifully. Now, your eighth house is highlighted for the third quarter moon, Ashwini. That's the house you need to pay attention to. It's the house of sex and death. It's the house of the occult. It's the house of your hidden psychological drives. Not necessarily your subconscious, but how you act on your subconscious. That's your eighth house, right? Um, it's also to do with shared finances, insurances, inheritances, benefits. Um, sorry, joint financial, joint financial endeavors or joint financial accounts, those types of things come into the forefront for the third quarter moon in Ashwini, that's what you need to focus on, okay? Um, because this is about to take you places. Like your passions, the things that you really like to do and the things that you really want to do, those things are about to take you places. So your eighth house is going to be incredibly important to focus on, especially when it comes to taxes, baby. Man, them taxes are a bitch. You need to focus on the, <laughs> the taxes thing. 
because your money is about to go up like exponentially your money is about to go up big time do you understand what i'm saying your money is about to go it take you places you're about to go places with um a lot of the stuff that you know all right so yeah baby it's all it's all systems go for virgos at this time so let's see what we can get for you so we've got courageous move fast talker and passionate teacher the most important notes you've got are strong alliances again it's all on the up and up you've got powerful people in your corner your skills are coming out yeah there's a lot to yeah yeah there are a lot of um magnificent opportunities ahead of you and you're taking them all without hesitation that's the attitude you need to have big facts that's the attitude you need to have right now so what else do i need i keep saying this over and over again but you see this six-fingered baby right here what I interpret from that is taking the things that people hate. Not the things that are necessarily bad in quality, but the things that people hate. Taking the things that people hate and making them a part of your art or a part of your talent. That goes especially well. That goes especially well. So whatever it is that people criticize you for that has nothing to do with quality, embracing those things actually puts you further on the map. It makes you stand out. It makes you, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of great things coming up for Virgos. You have a lot of good things happening for you, especially in your vocation or in your career. In your overall life, even things are getting better. So you have every right to feel positive. You should feel positive. Go with it. Keep moving with it. These next eight to, eight to 30 days are going to be lit. Enjoy. And I think that's it for Virgo. That was it for Otara Paoguni, Hasta and Chitra. I love you Virgo so much. Peace and blessings. Bye bye my darlings. Taurus now. This is for Kritika, Rohini and Magashirsha. Okay. So first of all, your 12th house is highlighted. That's your subconscious. That's your hidden enemies, baby. All of them motherfuckers come out during this time. It's going to be quite a gnarly thing when you find out who your true enemies are and what you, you, you find out who your true, what your true obstacles are. And on top of that, your vulnerabilities are going to come out. Your subconscious drives are going to come out. All of these things are going to come out and it's going to be quite intense at the same time the fact that the six of swords and the father of knives are here it indicates that you have a certain amount of mental control or psychological control and right now instead of focusing on you know you know ruminating on what's bad and letting that depress you you're using this as an opportunity to remove anything that anything from your life that doesn't need to be there so you're utilizing this time quite beautifully at the moment. Okay. Now let's see from the notes what we can get from that. We've got problem solver, CEO, computer wizard, autism, hidden genius, much travel, many moves, determination, much success, general, wanting more independence, wanting more freedom, wanting less responsibility on top of an organization. I think um, this is the part where you say to people, you know what, I'm fucking done. And you're not done permanently. The, let's not get this twisted. You're not done permanently. It's just that you understand you've been taking on too much. Uh, truth be told, Leo needs to learn a lesson or two from you. You've, been, you've figured out that you've been taking on too much. And instead of being like, ah! instead of doing all that you're like okay what needs to be streamlined from my life so instead of being hysterical you're like okay what do i need to remove from this equation what am i doing too much of and you're kind of ruthless about cutting these things out 
but that's good you need to be ruthless about that shit and as a result you will have greater peace of mind for the next eight to eight to thirty days because you understand how much you're taking on and how much it's affecting you and you're like no i can't do this i cannot do this something has to give and you know it has to give so you start removing um certain aspects from your life you start removing things from your life that don't need to be there you start streamlining you start yeah it you start making making a real difference you know in your life towards a positive direction it's not that you're still not running things or you're not working or anything like that it's just that as your responsibility grows, you realize that there are certain things you can't afford to do anymore and that you have to delegate and you delegate them effortlessly. It's really cool. It's really cool, actually. Um, it's also very practical considering that your hidden enemies are going to come to the surface and your hidden obstacles are going to come to the surface for everybody to see. So your priority needs to be on handling these things anyway. So you delegating your tasks and you delegating your responsibilities, it works out extremely well for you for the next 8 to 30 days. And I feel like you do very, very well at the end of it. You do extremely well. Um, you're working a lot, you're doing a lot, but you're not overburdened. Again, Leo, take note. Okay, if you're, if you're cross-watching Leo... Take note. So is that it for Taurus? <coughs> I feel like career-wise, you're going to have a lot of success as well. I don't think there's much to report here because career-wise, things are looking very good for you. And the fact that things are going so well, like, you're, again, you're learning how to delegate properly. I, th I feel like that's it for Taurus. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's it for you guys. So that was for Kritika, Rohini and Magashirsha. Peace and blessings, Taurus. I love you so much. Bye-bye, my darlings. Sage. This is for Mula, Porva Ashada and Otara Ashada. Okay. And let's have a look at the sign. I want to tear everything down. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. But anyway, let's have a look at your sign. So first of all, your fifth house is highlighted. That's your house of legacy, but it's also your house of your deepest joys. It's your house of your pleasure. It's a house of your talents, speculative finances, romance, sexuality. So all of these things need to come into play. Gaming, sports, enjoyable sports. So all of these things need to come into play. All of these things need to take priority in your life. Having more fun and through having that, having more fun and allowing more joy into your life, leaving something meaningful behind. Um, this house is also to do with children, but I know that some of you have children and some of you do not. For those who have children, your joy and your children should come hand in hand. So finding ways to make your relationship with your kids more joyous. And if you don't have children, then it's really about creative ideas and even manifestation, finding ways to incorporate joy into manifestation and creativity. So that's gonna be important for sages for the next eight to 30 days, okay? Now let's get to your cards because baby, we have a doozy up in here. Okay, so with the hermit card, it seems like you have a lot of knowledge that other people are not paying attention to. But the best thing to do is to just keep quiet and not let everyone know how smart you truly are. That's the truth. Because even without you saying anything, some big ass truths that you've already been like, there are some big ass truths that you've already been talking for years that finally come out and there are shock waves everywhere right there are shock waves all over the place so keep quiet there are a lot of things that you know but keep quiet and don't say anything because it will come out for you anyway and when it comes out for you when you when it turns out you knew the truth all along there will be less resentment towards you 
you understand what I mean? Because when you speak the truth and then the truth comes out, the first thing that people often do is often blame the person who told the truth. Like, it, it's just the way that it is. You know, because you're a fucking killjoy. You killed our joy. Why the fuck did you do that? <coughs> but if you keep quiet and instead prepare for these big revelations coming out, guess what? You come out smelling the roses. Prepare and keep quiet. That's all I've got to say to you. And focus on your joy. Focus on being happy. The hermit is associated with the higher frequency of Leo or the, the latter half of Leo. You know, that's to do with your ninth house too. So having more fun, enjoying yourself, doing what you love to do. This is going to be important in building up that timeless knowledge. And that timeless um, eternal wisdom that you have or that you're accumulating. You know, the truth will come out without your help. You don't need to do anything. And when it happens, it will be entertaining as hell for you. I'll get that popcorn ready. <laughs> I'll get that popcorn ready, Saj. Because that is going to be some interesting shit that goes down. I can tell you that now for nothing. So... For you, we've got teaching online, teaching art and music, retired teacher, emotional meltdown, dangerous woman. You see, this is why you need to keep quiet because somebody's about to fucking pop. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at this. I shouldn't laugh at this, but somebody's about to fucking pop, Leo, Sagittarius. Somebody's about to fucking pop and it's not you. I thought it would be you, but it's not you because I, I read rage for you from another reading that i did i think it was the um full moon in Ottara ashada reading i read that rage will be coming out for you but this is not you that has a rage fit it's somebody else and their rage is a lot more destructive do you understand what i mean and you're sitting back watching all of it happen as truths start coming out about these people you're sitting by the sidelines just watching everything unfold and it's like oh my god keep fucking quiet i'm begging you because like yeah yeah let that shit unfold baby let it unfold yeah that's going to be really interesting so emotional meltdown that's not you don't worry about it dangerous woman definitely not you teaching the teacher teacher becoming the student postgraduate studies Endless fighting, online classes, spiritual guidance. <coughs> this is where it gets interesting for your most important notes. We've got manipulation and learning from mistakes. You, Sagittarius, by the time this happens, you have learned a lot of what not to do at this point. But instead of learning the hard way, you end up learning the easy way. Somebody else learns the hard way. Somebody else has a massive crash out, a massive meltdown, because the truths that you've been holding inside, spirit brings it out before you say anything. So that causes them to have a massive crash out, a massive meltdown, and it sends shock waves every fucking where. To the point where all you have to do is sit back and let people come to you. Let people come to you. Let people let people say, "Hey, Sage, what's going on? Sage, like, did you know? Did you know about this? Like, what's going on? What the fuck's happening? Is this, this person's blowing blowing the fuck up? What's going on? So yeah, Sage, people are going to be coming to you, looking to solve the problems, and you're going to be right there, like, okay." Well, this is what's happening. This is what's been happening. This is how to deal with it. This is what happens when you spend more time preparing and keeping your mouth shut than opening your mouth and speaking the truth. Because, again, everything comes out for you. You don't need to do anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is it. You understand what I mean? So let, let me just... Oh, 
okay manipulation and learning from mistakes it is you it is you that's more strategic it's you're more strategic you're less you're less like up front but somebody else's machinations get exposed it's not yours it's somebody else's oh my oh my oh whoa okay so oh Sagittarius somebody tried to come for you and like that person's about to be exposed big time they tried to come for you it's just not going to work out well for them and in the meantime while that's happening you're coming back to spirit and you're kind of praying over the situation being submissive to spirit is what's going to get you through this situation because even though <clears throat> even though you're not the one who's suffering um you are kind of at the center of it you are at the center of it even though it's not you that's suffering different things at the moment it's like you're at the center of what's going on so it's like you have to kind of lean on spirit for support a little bit but the truth comes out and people are going to want to ask you, like, you knew this all along. You tried to tell people all along. Okay, we're listening. What exactly is happening here? Do you understand what I mean? So, oof, Sag, that's intense as fuck. But I'm, I'm just glad you, I'm just glad you come out of this shit unscathed. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just glad you come out of this shit relatively unscathed because what the fuck? um again focus on your joy keep quiet stay prepared everything will unfold what it needs to you don't need to push you don't need to press the issue everything's in hand spirit's got it basically and you know what's you know what spirit's like when people don't listen the first time and you've been listening so you ain't got nothing to worry about baby <coughs> so yeah that was for sag that was for Mula, Porva Ashada, and Uttara Ashada. God damn. Is there anything else I need to... Teaching art and music retired? Yeah, I've already covered the, you know, the gist of what's going on here. So, Jesus. Okay, so that was for you. That was for Mula, Porva Ashada, and Uttara Ashada. I love you guys so much. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. my darlings. Mm. Now what's the haps with caps? I don't like this caps. What the fuck is the haps? Boy. Okay, so let me have a look at this carefully before I start talking. All right, so first of all, your fourth house is highlighted. That's the house of your private life. The house of um, your home, roots, family, land. These are things that you're going to need to focus on for the next 8 to 30 days, okay? But I'm not liking the look of this. So what's in store for Otara, Ashada, Shravana and Danishta? Um, you know what I hate about this, Cappy? It looks like... You tried to do what was right for everybody and yet you're the one who caught static. Hate that for you. Truly hate that for you. I don't like it at all. Um, it's like somebody, like the person who is at the center of this, like you try to do what's right for everybody, but in, in doing so, you kind of inadvertently or maybe on purpose fuck somebody over. But because this person is a balanced person they're a balanced human being and they understand your reasons behind what you did and they understand that your intentions were good their perspective on the situation might just provide a get a, get out of jail free card in this case yeah it might just provide a get out of jail free card because it's like the way it stands i've experienced this too because this is something that a lot of saturnian 
signs, you know, Saturn dominance, Saturn Atmakaraka, Saturn Amatiakaraka, Saturn fucking, you know, Saturn dominant signs, anything Saturnian, we become very good at picking enemies. We become very good at picking enemies. Subconsciously, the people that we are attracted to are our true enemies. And then the enemies that we attract to us, the ones that we have the most problems with, they are actually the ones who are usually the most on our side. It's the ones who are mouthy, it's the one you're constantly cussing us out, it's the ones that are just getting on our fucking nerves. They're usually the more loyal ones of the equation, whereas the ones that we gravitate towards, the ones that we're truly attracted to, those are actually our true enemies. And those are the ones that you've been backing up. You've been backing up the ones who haven't been causing a fuss, who have been really nice, who have been like pleasant, haven't directly confronted you about anything. Those are the ones that you've been protecting, but they're the ones who fucking abandon you and leave you by the side of the road. I hate this. I hate this. Like, oh, and I love Cappy. I love reading for you guys usually. Man, but you guys just get shafted. But it, luckily for you, the same person that you had a disagreement with, the same person that you thought was your true enemy, they actually go to bat for you. And that provides you with a lifeline. And I have a feeling that it's, it is professional, but it actually has more to do with how your life infringes on your professional life. Like your personal life infringes your, on your professional life. And this person that you've been previously quarreling with, they're the ones who step up to defend you. If I were you, Capricorn, I would learn from this. I would learn from this. Stop looking for the people who give you an easy ride because they don't mean you any good. They don't mean you any good. They will use you for what they can get you for and then they will either get revenge on you or they'll leave you by the wayside. Focus on the people who are honest enough to disagree with you. Those are your true friends. Those are your true friends. And those are the ones that are going to have your back. When all is said and done. Alright. Let me get into your notes though. So we've got creating a new path. Moving away from responsibility. Recklessness. Working on your own agenda. Spying on someone. Something or someone. Heaven on earth procrastination team leader working well with others so it's not all bad fantastic it's not all bad right it means that this person who offered you a lifeline um has also highlighted your most positive traits and that's what so you you'll find that you know whilst the old set abandon you and leave you high and dry you'll gain a new set of people who might not be the type of people you would usually hang around, but they're loyal and they truly see you for who you are. They really see you. And that's exactly what you need, Capricorn. You need people who truly see you. You don't need all these fake bitches around you. Because, baby, we're Capricorn. We don't do fake shit over here. Okay? We're Cappies. They're, all them fake bitches need... It. All them fake bitches to the left. I don't care. Okay? Not for my caps, not for my goats. I, I'm sorry. Not for you. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah, so that, that's for you, baby. I'm, I'm really sorry that this reading was so heavy. But for the next 8 to 30 days, you'll see a shift in the, the quality of people that you hang around. And when that happens, be grateful, make the most of it, work around it. You know? Cinderella had mice until she had a prince. You will have these people, you know, these kooks and these weirdos in your life until the time comes for you to ascend. And you will ascend. Trust me. Yeah. <clears throat> so, my beautiful cappies, please do not despair. You got this, baby. You got this. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. So you can count me as one of these. I'm rooting for you. Okay. So that was a Capricorn. That was for Uttara, Ashada, Shravana and Danishta. I love you guys so much. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. my darlings.
Um, Aquarius now. This is for Danishta, Shatabisha and Purva Bajapada. Let's see what's going on for my beautiful Aquarians. First of all, your third house is highlighted. That's the house of your extended family. Like your siblings, aunts, uncles, grandparents. It's your nearby community. It's city life. It's your formal education or your early education. It's your communication. All of these things are going to be important for you to focus on. <coughs> Sorry, Aquarius. All of these things are going to be important for you to focus on for the next 8 to 30 days, all right? Now, let's see how everything ties in with these cards right here because I'm liking the look of this. This looks very gentle. It looks very nice. It looks very pleasant. Let's see what we can get for you. We've got the Knight of Cups. We've got the Six of Coins. And we have got Wisdom. Okay. Now, <coughs> we've got Wisdom. So let's see what we can get for you, Aquarius. Oh, I like this. Okay, Aquarius, we've got romance, sharing luxury, entertainer, stage, much generosity, project management, and learning to be more generous. Okay, so I feel like some of you will have new relationships, <clears throat> and they are the kind of relationships, that, there's not so much struggle, and there's not so much complexity, there's more ease, there's more like gently guiding you towards making more beneficial changes with your life and how you approach people so it's not like it feels like a very beautiful and pleasant eight to thirty days for you it feels like there's a lot of ease going on here it feels like there's a gentle move towards the future you're not being fucking kicked out unceremoniously into a new day there's a gentleness about it there's a lot of love both coming from the past and moving into the future. So you're moving into the future with ease. Things are moving along nicely. And like I said before, usually this kind of relationship um, is shallow and superficial and doesn't have a chance of lasting that long. But it seems to be bucking that trend here. It seems to be the kind of relationship that is making you a better person by basically like opening you up in a gentle way rather than trying to force you open so this is a really really good eight to thirty days for the aquarians and i love that for you i really do um yeah it's gonna be a really really good good time for you is there any anything else i can see please let me get something else it can't be this short The way this happens, the way this beautiful and gentle stuff happens, you weren't expecting this. <clears throat> you really weren't expecting this. You were expecting, you know, it, it was like A, B, then C, but it's like the way this beautiful relationship and this beautiful friendship happens, it's like A and then D and then like fucking x back there and then like like it just happens in the weirdest way like it just happens in the weirdest fashion and it's like hold on a minute like like what's going on here like it's like, it's like what's happening here like I, like you, it's like you can't it's like you can't make hide nor hair of how it's happening but you know you're safe and you know your things are good and you know you can you know, you know you can breathe a little bit. You know, it's not the type of confusion that just leaves you stressed out. It's just like, oh, okay, all right, this is happening. Um, I'll move with it though. I'll go with it and see where it goes. And it goes into a really lovely place. So yeah, you have nothing to worry about here. This looks gorgeous. I love this for you. So that was for my beautiful Aquarians. It turns out to be a short reading for you babies. Um, that was for... Danishta, Shatabisha, and Purva Bajrapada. I love you, Aquarius. Peace and blessings, my darling. Bye-bye. Pisces now. Okay. I like this for you already. Oh, 
yeah i'm loving this for you already i already get good vibes from this but let's get to pisces this is for podra bajrapada uttara bajrapada and Revati. okay so second house this is to do with your possessions your what you truly value um the partnerships that you make non-specific but usually not romantic um it's to do with your face it's to do with your physical beauty it's to do with um your voice how you how you voice your concerns how you speak your mind you understand and a lot of pisceans um tend to be quite direct with what they think and feel and a lot of people think that just because you guys are vague it means you're not direct no you are very direct in how you in the voice that you use like it's very much like what you see is what you get when it comes to the voice that you have not necessarily what you say but the voice that you have so your second house is something that you need to focus on and the most important thing in your second house that you need to focus on um or the most important things are your values because whatever it is that you value it affects your possessions and your environment and the people that you hang around so focusing on these things are going to be very important for you but something tells me this is going to work beautifully for you for the next 8 to 30 days. Because automatically, I get that you're refocusing your priorities. <clears throat> and you're managing your money well, some of you. You're managing your money really well. So like on top of you prioritizing what you need, rearranging your financial life around what you actually need. <clears throat> Like you're really, like you're just really doing it. You're really doing beautifully. Um, I kind of love that for you. Um, so what we've got here, let's see. Yeah, you're doing beautifully with your finances. You're managing your money well. You're not spending too much. Yeah, things are going really well for you over there. I'm, I kind of love it. Um, let's see. We've got practical choice and common sense for your notes. We've got wealthy, many possessions, teamwork in business. This is great. I love this for you. Being the heart of a team, wealthy charity, theatre, home and work comfort, practical abilities create abundance, wealthy home. Oh, I love this for you. Like I said before, you're handling your finances very carefully. You're not spending too much. You're not doing too much. And yeah, it's great. I, I love that for you. You're doing excellently. You're doing excellently and it feels like a lot of things are just very grounded for you. You know, it's very, very grounded for you. And I kind of love that. It's very beautiful. There's a lot of grounding. There's a lot of, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of stability for the next 8 to 30 days. Not just financially, but in your home, in your domestic life, in your work. There's a lot of stability. There's a lot of grounding. You know, you're you're not doing too much. Nothing is being done too much to you. Uh, everybody's getting along. Everybody has good ideas. Everybody is listening to each other. That's the most crucial thing. Everybody in your life is listening to each other, Pisces. They're listening to each other and they're really paying attention, which means a lot of things are liable to run, well, are likely, not liable, likely to run smoothly for the next eight to 30 days. It's really nice, I love that. Let's see if I could get anything else for, for you or if it's gonna be a short reading. Because if, if all of this is going particularly well, then there's nothing left to really say. Um, don't chase love, like don't ruin it by chasing love or chasing romance. Um, right now it's about coming back to your values. That's what it's about right now. When you find your values, um, I guarantee you, you will find that person. But don't do too much, Pisces. Don't be like, you know, I need to find love. Because the thing is, it's because uh, I can I can understand and I can relate to this. When you're doing really well in your financial life and your like your work and your home, when things are going really well, um, it's things are going really well um and when things are going really well like that 
it's tempting to be like, oh, you know, if only I had somebody to share it with. Um, you're not as premature as Leo is. I, I keep I keep calling out Leo like <laughs> I keep calling out Leo like no, I, I don't want to call out Leo, but like <clears throat> do you know what I mean? But like it's not like Leo where they're only just beginning and already like they've got like survivor's remorse. It's like, you know that things are going well and things are stabilizing and things are really moving along nicely. Um, it's natural to want to share that with somebody. Do you understand what I mean? It's natural to want love and romance and stuff. It's natural to not want to be lonely with the things that you worked hard for and with the things that you were careful about it's natural to not want to be lonely in that space but this is exactly why focusing on your values at this time are important because if you don't focus on your values and you don't focus on what truly means something to you then you can end up being with people who don't reflect that who don't reflect your values who don't reflect your integrity so right now you really need to focus on what truly means something to you like, let this be what this is. You don't need to share that with anybody, any significant other for now. You don't need to do that. You don't need to be doing that, Pisces. You're doing just as well on your own or with your friends or with um, the people in your life that are surrounding you at the moment. Then right now, this is all you need. Do not go looking for romance. Do not go looking for love. It'll come to you. You have to be patient. You know, I'm not being funny, baby, but we got like, you know, coming up in August, we, we're likely to have a first quarter moon in, in Libra anyway. So that will come to you. You don't need to go out looking for it. Do you understand what I mean? And even if it doesn't come, focus on your values first, because then you can have healthier relationships. You know, is that it for Pisces? What else can I see for Pisces? Some of you are starting over with something. I don't know what it is, but there's something that, yeah, there's some, sorry, Pharaoh within just joined. Um, yeah, so, yeah, thank you, Pharaoh within. So you said wise words. Yeah, um, so... I feel like a lot of you are starting over, but because you have like a really strong foundation of material stability and domestic stability and all the rest of it, um, it's actually easy for you to start over. It's not, it's not like really, really tricky or challenging. Um, there are little hiccups here and there, but not enough to really rattle you. Um, I feel like you're in a really favorable position for the next eight to 30 days. So I feel like you should make the most of that. You know what I mean? So... That was for Pisces. That was for Purva Bajrapada, Uttara Bajrapada, and Revati. Thank you, Pisces. I love you so much. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. my darlings. Libra now. This is for Chitra, Swati, and Vishaka. Now, uh, yeah. Libra, your seventh house is coming into focus here. Your need for relationships, your significant relationships, both professional and romantic. It's also to do with your rivalry, your foes. Well, not your foes, but your rivalry. Foes are more 6 and 12. So it's to do with rivalry, romantic relationships, professional relationships, and your closest relationships. Those need to take priority for the next 8 to 30 days, which is something that you find easy to prioritise anyway. Um... One second, hang on. Oh, shit. Sorry, Libra. Those are the wrong cards for you. These are your cards. This is interesting because you've got relationships that you need to focus on. But as you are as a person, you are transforming. You are becoming someone different. There's somebody in your life who kind of resents um, the fact that you're changing and the fact that you're growing as a person. There's somebody in your, in your life who resents that and they will try as much as they can to try to keep you in your place. Um, 
you got to tell them respectfully, fuck off. You got to tell them respectfully, fuck off. You cannot allow these people to, to bring their negativity and their <clears throat> and their stagnant energy in your life anymore. You've got to let them go, or you have to make preparations to be away to be as far away from them as possible. Okay. Now let's see what we can get for your other notes, right? We've got talented teacher. Defensive player, gift of the gab, high skillfulness, too many politics, skill tradition and promotion. You're moving up in the world. You're moving up in the world. You're going places, Libra. Um, it took a lot for you to do, but you're actually doing it. But the truth of the matter is, is that as you're ascending and as you're getting better and as you're progressing in life, again, there are people who are close to you who are supposed to have your back that are just not feeling it for you. They just don't want you to have that. And truth be told, when it comes to anybody Venusian or any Venusian signs, um, you're not supposed to have that type of energy in your life. You're not supposed to have the type of energy that's like, you know, loves to argue and loves to fight and loves to try to keep you down. You're not trying, you're not supposed to have that energy in your life. So for some of you, it might be time to start cutting cords because these people are just acting up. These people are just acting up for no fucking reason other than jealousy and pettiness and resentfulness. You know, because the thing is, I feel like with some of the relationships in your life, I feel like it's because of them that you are in the position that you are in now. I feel like it's because of, it's because of them that you're in the position that you're in now. But whilst you've taken that opportunity to work on your mindset so that you can continue to improve and make the most of everything that they've given you, they have stayed stuck in that same mentality that you, you came to them with. They're stuck in that same mentality and therefore they haven't progressed. Why would they if they're still stuck in the same fucking mentality? It's not your problem that you're willing to progress and move forward and, and do what it did. It's not your fucking, it's not your fucking fault. You're actually moving forward in your life. You're moving past everything. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're actually moving forward and you're doing what you need to be doing. Do you understand what I mean? Which means you're actually taking this person, all that support that that person gave you, and instead of it being wasted, you're actually utilizing it in the best way it needs to be utilized. But instead of recognizing that, some of these people who supported you are like, after everything that I did for you, you're just going to walk out and leave me behind. You wouldn't have left them behind if they had caught up to you in their mindset. You wouldn't be leaving them behind like that. But instead, they're not catching up to your mindset. That come the fuck on now, like, they can't turn around and say, you know, oh, I'm going to refuse to change, I'm going to refuse to grow, and then when you start growing because of advice that they gave you or support that they gave you, now you owe them something. No, you don't owe them a damn thing. It was up to them to get up to your level. And if they refuse to do so, that's their issue. Do you understand what I mean? And as you let them go, there will be people in your life who truly appreciate how far you've come and how much you're willing to do with your life, a new set of people will take over. So it's similar to Capricorn in that sense. A new set of people will take over that honor your dignity and honor your, honor your time, honor your skills, honor your talent. And those are the type of people you need to have around you. Okay. You're leveling up big time, big time. And it's starting to show in other areas of your life as well. So be prepared for that. Um, now, this is the thing of this, the misconception about your sign that I want to clear up. A lot of people think that, you know, you're just so desperate to be liked by everybody. No, 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 no. You're trying to move through your own life as smoothly as possible. And you know that in order to have that, there has to be minimal conflict. But people need to not get this twisted. Just because you want to keep everything smooth and everything harmonious 
it doesn't actually mean that you're codependent, especially not higher frequency Libras. That's not codependency. That's just you playing it smart. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But yeah, you're changing, you're growing. And it's like, if people don't want to get on board, that's their problem. I'm sorry. I don't care if they were there in the beginning. If they're not there in the end, there's nothing left to say. If they're not there in the end, the results speak for themselves. Why are they not there with you? It's just the truth. I'm shrugging. I'm shrugging. You can't see it behind the camera, but I'm shrugging right now. Shrug. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So, is that it? Yeah, that's it for you, Libras. So, that was for my beautiful Libras. That was for Chitra, Swati, and Vishaka. I love you so much, Libras. Peace and blessings. Mm -hmm. Bye bye, my darlings. Scorpio. This is for Vishaka, Anuradha, and Jeshla. How are you doing, Scorpio? Sorry, I just need to take a drink here. So, first of all, Scorps, we've got to pay attention to your sixth house. This is your house of daily life, of daily routine, health, hygiene dietary health it's also to do with services open enemies and open obstacles it's to do with um the minute details of life it's to do with your work as well so all of these things are things that you need to consider things that you need to focus on for the next eight to 30 days okay when it comes to these cards right here we have got the nine of coins. We have got Big Mama. This is my favorite card out of the Hoodoo Tarot. So already I'm jealous of you. Um, and then we've got Rhythm. All right. Now, let's see what we can get for you from the notes. We've got Being Self-Reliant, Soul Family, Long-Term Success, Renewal, Being With Love, clever team assertiveness and being ambitious so it seems like your sixth house considerations are going pretty damn well for you at the moment <laughs> it seems like they're going pretty damn well for you at the moment it seems like things are going very very well in your workplace and in your daily life and among the people who serve you like your plumbers or your diy people it seems like everything's on the up and up over there and i do love it but I'm kind of jealous, I'm not going to lie. A big mama, come on, man. Look at that cornbread. I want to eat. I want to eat that already. Look at it. And look at her. She's gorgeous. Well, like, come on, man. So just like that deliciousness here and that gorgeousness here, so is your 8 to 30 days, Scorpio. I was not expecting to get this reading for you, but after, like, after the full moon... You know, after the full moon and especially you're like just just after so much after so much like up and down and up and down. It's like it's nice to actually get some some richness, some beauty, some love. You know, it hasn't been a bad July for you, but I feel like this is where it peaks. This is where your July peaks. And you guys always peak late, true to form, Scorpio. But like, I feel like this is where your your month of July truly peaks, and where things truly look wondrous for you. There's a rhythm to life that you are kind of in flow with. You're in flow with life's rhythm at the moment. You're not struggling against the current, and that's what's leading you to make a lot of good decisions. Um, almost effortlessly in a way because you're so in tune with life and you're so in tune with what's going on that it like there's minimal problems going on at the moment it's like you're just so in tune with what's going on and you know of course you being more in tune with everything means you're not so stressed out and because you're not so stressed out your relationships are benefiting and because your relationships are benefiting it's circling back round and it's having a positive effect on your 
your emotional health. So everything is just really, really nice and it feels great. And it's like, there's so much that you wanted, you know, you wanted the love to be really, really palpable. You wanted your loved ones together. You wanted so many things to happen and now it's finally happening and it's great. It's just not in the way that you thought it was going to happen. But it that if anything, that just makes it even more precious to you. The fact that after all this praying and after all this crying and after all this pain, you know, you're finally able to enjoy the relationship with some of your loved ones that you've been dying to enjoy. And now it's all coming to pass and now it feels fantastic. And, and you're just you're just in your element and it's just wonderful for you. And I, I truly I, I love this for you. You know, more than envy, I'm feeling a sense of pride right now as I'm reading this. It's really beautiful to see. And I feel like if some of you have been alone, you're not going to be alone anymore. There are going to be relationships, new relationships coming into your life that are really and truly meaningful and just absolutely beautiful. Like it's so, it's, oh, it feels like your soul was starved, but it, now it's being fed. And it's a lovely feeling, like that's the feeling that I get for you for the next 8 to 30 days. And of all places, it's happening in your sixth house. The house of the mundane, the house of, you know, open obstacles and things that annoy you and all that type of stuff. Like, no, it's just plain smooth sailing here. It's just beautiful. Yeah, like, let me see what else I can get for you. I see a baby. Oh, some of you are either preparing for a new life or you're making a new life for yourself. Some of you are finally settled in. You're finally settled and you're finally happy. And it, yeah, 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 things are looking really good for you. I'm not going to lie. Next eight to 30 days, like, there's a lot to enjoy. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're settled. You're settled and you're about to embark on a new life from you being settled. So it's it's really nice. It's really nice. I love that for you. Okay, let's see what else I can see. I think that's it for Scorpio. So yeah, that was for Vishaka, Anuradha and Jeshtha. Oh, I love it for you. Take care, Scorpio. Peace and blessings. Mm -hmm. Bye bye, my darlings. Gem gems. I'm already liking the look of this. Already. Don't let any appearances fool you because I'm I'm seeing a lot of good things here. All right. So, Gemini for Magashirsha, Ardra, and Ponavasu. We have your eleventh house. All right. That's your house of karma, destiny, your peers, your social groups. Yeah. It's the house of, um, I already said destiny, didn't I? But it's also the house of your gains, what you gain at the end of everything. So these are the things that you need to focus on for the next 8 to 30 days, all right? Now, when it comes to the cards, you've got the 8 of cups, which I like already. You've got Miss Robinson, that's the devil card. Don't worry about it, because it might not be negative, all right? And then you've got limitation. So let's see what we can get for your cards, Gem Gems. So first of all, we've got speaking a foreign language, moving out of darkness, a new start, seeking a new path, renewal, being with loved ones, goodwill, returning a favour, obsessive woman and fearful psychic. Okay, this is... All right, all right, all right, all right. So there are some of you Geminis who do divinations but you're a little bit faithful with it. And this is coming from somebody who's very faithful. This is coming from somebody who's very like, gotta keep it real. Like there are some of you who do divinations or some of you who are like, re you know, coming across your readings and you might have like a little bit of a fatalistic attitude towards it. And I think it's because you've been burned. Like there are times where I've done readings for you 
where things are just going so beautifully for you and then out of nowhere like just just out of nowhere and it's like I feel like you're just so tired of that at this point and even though your eighth house is in Capricorn which means you're good at you know you're good at preparing for plan b you're good at understanding the bottom line or reading the bottom line like you're good at all of that but at a certain point you just get tired of it you know i you know i i understand the feeling you don't always want to have to be resourceful you don't always want to have to argue with success you don't always want to feel pessimistic about shit and you feel like it's restricting you you feel like having to constantly be careful, having to constantly make calculations, having to constantly think what could go wrong. It's just driving you nuts and you just want to have positivity in your life. And it's like you're, you're trying to break out of that mindset. You're trying to break out of that mindset of seeing everything as a negative or being paranoid. Because even though not all Geminis are paranoid, in fact, quite frankly, most of you aren't, it's just that some of you are, and some of you are really tired of it. You're really tired of it. You're really tired of, like, worrying what could be around the corner. Even if something is around the corner, you're just like, I don't care. Just free me from this. Like, I, I don't fucking care. I just, I don't want to focus on it. And I get it. I really understand it. But... I hate to say this to you, but you do have to keep preparing. Not for the worst, because the worst case scenarios are actually very rare. Like at most, there's like a 4% chance of worst case scenarios happening. So I will never say prepare for the worst. I always say prepare for you not getting what you want. Always be prepared for you not getting what you want. Because you being prepared for that, it allows you to move forward in a positive way. It allows you to think about what you actually want to focus on. It allows you to have fun. It allows you to enjoy, you know, um, more positive feelings. It allows you to enjoy. So don't prepare for the worst. Never prepare for the worst. Because I, I usually say prepare for the best and the worst. Because that's the advice I was given. But... A more realistic handling of this would be to like prepare for what you want and prepare for you not getting it. So that's that's the more realistic way of kind of handling this situation. Prepare for what you getting what you want and prepare for you not getting what you want. That's more realistic, that's less fatalistic, that's that will allow you to actually enjoy life, be in the moment, you know, and not you know, some of you self-sabotage, not all of you, it will allow you to enjoy the moment without having to self-sabotage just to find balance. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just prepare for what you want, prepare for getting what you want, but also prepare for not getting it. It's realistic, it's not too negative, and it allows you to just live your life. You feel me? You know, that's the limitation, that's the true limitation. The true limitation is not in death, it's not in change, it's not in anything drastic. The limitation is just not getting what you want. And that limitation is there to remind you um, of does what you want and what you want to feel align with each other. It's simply an opportunity for you to go back to the drawing board. Okay, that's all it is. That's all it is. So, yeah... I hear you, Gemini. I hear you, man. Like, you know, but luckily the next eight to 30 days, it's not too dramatic. It's just that you're realizing like you want, you want your life to be better than this. And I, I get it. And I truly encourage it. I encourage you to go down this road. You know, I encourage you to go down this road and really understand what you truly want rather than, you know, having to revolve your desires around what could go wrong, you know? Because it's fucking exhausting. Who wants to live like that? Who? You know what I mean? So, yeah. It's going to be okay, Gemini. The next 8 to 30 days, it's not brilliant. But it's not really, really bad. It's it's okay, actually. It's not too bad at all. So, 
That was for Gem Gems. That was for Margaret Shirsha, Ardra, and Paula Vasso. I love you, Gemini. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. my darlings. And last but not least, my gorgeous crabs. My beautiful cancers. Now, what's in store for you guys? So, first off. Your 10th house is coming into focus, which goes right in hand in hand with that. So something wonderful is coming along for your career. Okay, first off, something wonderful is happening in terms of your career. Love this for you already. So now is the time to focus on your public image, your public role. You know, I'm sorry. Now is the time for you to focus on your public image, your public role. It's time for you to focus on um, your career, your true career, what you came on this world to do. Like your 11th house is the rewards of your work and your 10th house is your real work. Your self-actualization is in your 10th house. How you self-actualize is in your 10th house. So focusing on these things are going to be very important for you. For the next 8 to 30 days. But something tells me. That something good is going to come out of this. And I love this for you already Cancer. I love I love reading for you in general. Because I normally get such good readings for you. But let's see what the notes say. Um, actually before we get into the notes. We've also got the Hierophant right here. And we've got the Stillness card. These two are merged together. I'm going to explain why in a minute. Now. For your notes, we've got preacher, celebrant, spiritual belief, happy union, successful marriage, cancer. Oh my gosh. Schools and institutions, churches within churches, sub-religions, fame and fortune. You see it there? Charity, courageous and passionate organization and dissociation. Um, I get two readings from this. Some of you cancers are using the hierophant using the unspoken rules and regulation using tradition to push your emotions away whereas some of you are using this to actually control and manage your emotions properly we've got this with the crocodile here now the crocodile is usually still until the very crucial moment when they reach their prey I feel like whether you're pushing your emotions away or whether you're controlling your emotions capably, you're doing it for the same reason. You're not doing it so that you can repress yourself. I explained to you during the full moon reading that you can sense that something wonderful is about to happen to you. And yes, it is. This is where it starts. Okay. You can sense that something wonderful is about to happen. But before you react emotionally, what you're actually attempting to do is you're attempting to maintain calm, maintain pragmatism, and to keep working, because this is the higher end of Aries, to keep working in a methodical, precise, and controlled way to maintain that work ethic until it really is time to celebrate. Even though... This is the start of many positive occurrences that are going to happen throughout this year for you. You are not, you're not, you're not reacting yet. You're not reacting yet. You're keeping that, you're keeping a lid on that shit because you're like, no, I need to keep this under control. I know something wonderful is happening. I, I can already see it unfold, but I'm keeping a lid on my emotions. And again, it's not because you don't want to be happy. It's not because you want to repress yourself. You're not repressing yourself. You are controlling yourself. And you're continuing to work through the happiness. Work through the joy. Work through the rewards of all your hard work. And you're doing this because you know this is just the beginning. When you have something really to celebrate, that's when you're going to start. That's when you're going to start kicking things off. That's when you're going to start. Yes, let's go. That's when you're going to start doing all of that. Not now. Not now. 
not right now while you're still working things out do you understand what i mean so your 10th house is looking beautiful it's looking great you're getting more prestige but because you're getting more prestige you understand how emotional control works and you understand you're controlling the wilder side of your nature and you're only going to release it when it's time to release it and you also have control of your emotions too the wilder side of your nature and your emotions are under strict control according to your knowledge and the fact that you're playing chess not tic-tac-toe okay you're playing chess and not noughts and crosses you're playing chess and not drafts you're playing chess and not checkers that's what's going on here so yes things are going beautifully for you when it comes to your spiritual life that's actually what's centering you your resolve in your spiritual life is growing that's another thing that's causing all of this to happen it's causing your blessings but it's also causing you to be more emotionally controlled in experiencing your blessings it's because your spiritual side there's a strengthening that's happening with your spiritual side and you're allowing that to take over and dictate exactly what you do and how you move forward now maybe it's just the maga sun talking but let me just say right here and now i don't care what sign you are i don't care what religion you are i don't care um what your spiritual denomination is that has to come first in order for you to be a fully rounded human i'm sorry i know what people are gonna say oh well what about people who are agnostic or who are atheist i don't care if you're atheist or agnostic that's got to come first that's got to come first i don't care if you're atheist i don't care if you're agnostic i don't care if you're christian i don't care if you're muslim i don't care if you're jewish i don't care i don't care if you actively follow a religion and you actively have a spiritual life that must come first because the strength of that magical chain that comes from your faith it allows you to move through more smoothly in your life especially if you're already born lucky do you understand what i mean it allows you to move through life more effortlessly your spirituality must come first i don't care who you are what your belief system is even if you don't believe in anything that's got to come first do you understand what i'm saying because it's through that that you find your strength ideas are bulletproof and ideas have power you give yourself to an idea and you give it fully it provides you with a certain amount of protection and that's exactly what you end up doing, Cancer. You put your spirituality first above everything else. And because of that, you're finding that blessings enter your life more easily. But also you find yourself more able to emotionally handle your blessings. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's what's going on at the moment. Even as I'm doing this reading, I'm not my usual animated self when I'm doing your reading. I can feel your emotional restraint and it's quite admirable I'm not going to lie to you I can feel the restraint and uh, you know I'm I'm with it but that's what's giving you strength at the moment that's what's allowing you to continue and the wonderful thing about that is is that that can't be taken away from you that's that inch that's that inch that can't be taken away from you and I'm glad to see you embracing it so is that it for cancer? There's somebody that you thought you would never either have a relationship with or you thought you'd never be attracted to and you're attracted to them. And it's wild as hell, but embrace it. Successful marriage, remember? Some of you might find yourself being the other half of a power couple. But it's going to be like attached to the most unlikely person that you ever thought of. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah. That's it for cancer. That was for Paula Vasu, Kosha and Ashlesha. Peace and blessings cancer. 
I love you guys so much. You guys take care of yourselves and baby, you got this. Take care. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. my loves. <laughs>